There are several manifestations of division among the Muslims, and there are actions and behaviors that contribute to these divisions. One, and probably one of the most profound and poisonous, is the issue of Asobiyah and Qawmiyah. Asobiyah, it means nationalism, and Qawmiyah, tribalism. Muslims waving their flags, Muslims being proud of where they come from, Muslims always saying, putting a name, putting a country, putting some kind of ethnicity before Islam, saying, I am American Muslim. I am a Pakistani Muslim. I am an Australian Muslim. I am an Iraqi Muslim. I am a Saudi Muslim. I am a Lebanese Muslim. I am a Nigerian Muslim. No, we should never, ever, ever put anything before Islam. It is something that Muslims do innocently by habit even when they enter the mosque you will find muslims look for somebody who looks like them a muslim look to sit by somebody who talks like them a muslim will only invite somebody to their house who is from their place a muslim seems to seek loyalty and support and to live next to someone who eats his food and dresses like him and talks his lahja his dialect. This is signs of ignorance. This is signs of defeat. This is signs of weakness. This is signs of disease. This is signs of jahiliyyah. But we have been told, we have been told by our conquerors, we have been told by those people who have sponsored us, we have been told by those people who have entered our homes, our hearts, and our lands, we have been told by those people that this is good for us. This is a way that we can be identified. This is a way we can be distinguished. And we believe them because they give us something for it. Oh Muslims, this ignorance, Asabiyah and Kaumiya, is the ignorance and poison which is one of the main ingredients of division and pollution among the Muslims today. If we don't stop it, if we don't speak about it, then we are contributing to our own death and we are contributing to the erosion and the stagnation of Islam. It is the element that the non-Muslim conspirators, they use it to separate us. They use it to divide us. They use it to undermine the countries. They use, they use it to undermine our communities. They use it to undermine the individuals among the Muslims. We have been given special names by the Kuffar. We have been given special flags by the Kuffar. We have been given distinct countries by the Kuffar with independent constitutions and governments by the Kuffar. And that is how we see each other. One other aspect of kufr and shirk that we find ourselves immersed in, and that is the call to nationalism. That is the call to tribalism. It is the call to nationalism. It is that call that divides us, where people stand up and they call to the call of Jahiliyyah. They call to their nation. They call to my country, whether it's Lebanon, Turkey, Australia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Everyone now is fighting and calling people to their nationality and to their nation as if they are better and superior because of the country. The country that was devised for them by who? By the Kuffar, subhanAllah. The call of Jahiliyyah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam called it. So whoever calls with this call of Jahiliyyah, then they will be from the denizens of the hell. Whoever calls to nationalism and tribalism and parties and sects and groups and splitting this ummah, they call to the call of Jahiliyyah. They call and they will be the denizens of hell even if they pray and they fast and they call themselves Muslims. are in a collective state of psychosis because we're proud 
to belong to a country that was a map drawn by the non-Muslims 40, 50 years ago. How insane is that? Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Morocco, lines drawn on maps by the French, by the Italians, by the British, dividing us up into nations. And now we are screaming fanatically, rallying behind some flag that didn't even exist a hundred years ago, ready to fight for it and die for it. This is madness. This is sickness. This is something so far removed from what Allah revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. About which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever calls for asabiyya, whoever calls for tribalism, and whoever fights for asabiyya, for tribalism, then they call and they fight and they die the death of Jahiliyyah. They die and they fight and they call for the death of ignorance, the time of ignorance. The nations you're so proud of are rubbish. Pakistan's a failed state. Bangladesh is killing Muslims at the moment. Where else are you guys from? You, it's a failed state. Azad Kashmir has no political authority. Kashmir, the other part, is taken over by India. I mean, well, well, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You're nobody. We're no one. Our nationalism is, has been cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at our nations. We can't even defend our own Muslims. We can't even feed our own people. And you're proud of where you're from? SubhanAllah, I'm Greek. I'm not even proud of where I'm from. And Greece had a bigger empire than you. We, we've got a greater history than you. You're what? You started in 1950s? Bangladesh, 1971? And you think you're somebody. I'm sorry, this is bakwa, sorry, this is crazy, this is rubbish. I get so angry when I see it's because of the disease in the ummah. You know why? Wallahi, we have black brothers, they convert to Islam. Pious brothers, better than most of the Asian brothers sometimes. And they go to an Asian chacha. Say, Ya chacha, Salaam alaikum rahmatullah. You know, I love you to bits, I see you in the masjid. Can I ask for your daughter's hand? He's gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, Galima, yeah. What the heck is this guy? Yes or no? And I'm telling you, even some of you have this in your hearts now. Even you have that. You, look, I know you guys, right? I'm in the Asian community. I'm married into the Asian community, okay? So I know Wagwan. I know what's going on. Even if you're pious, our hearts sometimes, you know, will never allow our daughters to marry a black man. Never. Forget that. A Punjabi can't even marry a Kashmiri. A Kashmiri can't even marry a Bengali. An Afghani can't even marry an Afghani. <laughs> yeah, do you see the problem here? Nationalism is destructive. It's destructive. And it's one of the main issues, I think, why there's a lot of sisters who are pious that are unmarried. Because they can't find someone within the community and therefore the door is shut for them. They can't go outside of the community. And this is a shame. So remember where we're going, death. And, and death will break us. Nationalism is not going to help us. It's not going to take us anywhere. And I'm not saying this to offend you, Ikhwan and Akhawat. We should be proud of our language. So respect your language, respect your cultural customs that are not against Islam. But don't make it now your creed, your aqeedah. It is the yardstick, it's the, the lenses, the glasses you put on your, your face to see the world. And it's all judged by those nationalistic boundaries. We are one ummah, khalas. Whether you like it or not, we bleed in the same color. We smile in the same language and we laugh in the same language. And we eat with the same hand. Yeah? Come on, we're one. We are one and remember this. Remember this, okay? You know, my parents are non-Muslim. But they don't have Asabiya. When I was growing up, my dad said, Oh, forget Greece. You know, I don't want you to be defined by Greek. I want you to be defined by your human nature. Turks came to my house, blacks, Asians, whites, greens, blues, purples, rainbows. Everybody came into the house. And that's my dad, he's not even Muslim. So why would my dad, who's not a Muslim, follow the values that we should be following? This is why I'm upset. Because at home I see Islam, but they're not Muslim. But when we go, when I go to the Muslim community, I don't see Islam. How does that make me feel? Even in Bangladesh, right? 
a Chittagonian can't marry a Sileti. Isn't that right? It's terrible. And I think really the only way to break nationalism is to to belittle it a lot, you know? Because it's all based on ego. And remember where you came from. Allah tries to break our nafs and says, you were a baby. You could even wipe your own backside or keep your head up. And now you think, you know, you're something. You were a despised fluid. A despised fluid and you think you're special. So these kind of principles and realities will make us realize that we're actually nothing. Only Allah gives us the izda by believing Him and worshipping Him. Nationalism won't do that. Even the Prophet ﷺ, when he took over Mecca, I believe, he stamped his foot, he said, Nationalism is under my foot. Think about this. A few years ago, Ikhwan, relatively 10, 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, some guy, a colonialist, who killed your forefathers, drank their blood almost, and burnt their books, went on a map, and he drew some lines on a map, and you define yourself by those lines. Think about that. He said, anyone from amongst me, anyone, any human being who calls on Asabiya, who calls on nationalism, who calls for it, who fights for it, or who dies for it, he's not from amongst me. Another hadith to talk about the disgust, the view in terms of what Islam thinks of nationalism. When the Prophet says, leave it, stay away from it, abstain from it, it's rotten. And look at the history of the Muslims, that in the last 100 years, we've been humiliated. Why? Because we are nationalists. How do we, as an ummah, expect this ummah to be victorious while we are quarreling amongst ourselves?